And a good Tuesday afternoon, Roger Hill, Velco Weather Hazards forecaster. This is the Velco Weather Hazards Outlook. Large picture, we can see Vermont, a little bit of sunshine now, and uh, just a few cumulus buildups out there, not a big deal. And still on the edge of this sort of cloud shield that's uh, kind of still unsettled, kind of leftovers of that old upper level low. We have an area of higher pressure that's ridging in uh, at the surface, and this is going to be setting up shop and putting a guard on our neck of the woods here. Uh, it looks like through Thursday night. However, clouds will be increasing with this weather system that's going to gradually work its way up the Appalachians, up the eastern seaboard, and into the state of Vermont. This business will be overhead and in our vicinity, it looks like, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and probably beyond the period where we'll still see some uh, humidity, some slightly warmer temperatures, nothing real significant in terms of warmth, but at the same time, popping up showers and thunderstorms. And uh, on Saturday, probably the most robust day as it looks at this time for this outlook. Let's take a look at some of the uh, latest computer modeling. This time around, we have the uh, Canadian model, the GEM, on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, we have the Euro. And as I run the model, you can see just a little indications of something in terms of precipitation. I believe this is a little bit of a wet feedback that uh, typically shows up on the European model during uh, 15Z to 18Z. And typically after 18Z, things dry out. And typically you'll have more showers uh, convectively after that point. So we're going to basically ignore it. Same kind of thing going on here with the gem. So that area of higher pressure is... Uh, doing its thing and uh, allowing for clear skies and sinking motion in the atmosphere. And that's going to bring us really pretty fine weather uh, across the region going into Wednesday as well as Thursday. You can see a little bit of the creep up of this moisture here is going to try to make it in. Most latest models have been increasing this a little bit more uh, robustly, but it gets into southern Vermont uh, in the early afternoon. I'm going to ignore it because I, most of the computer modeling before that point has been trying to indicate that and then backing off a little bit. So I think it's kind of a little bit uh, bogus at this point. But uh, this weather system is what's going to work on in, and it's going to allow for some pop-up shower and thunderstorm activity. A little bit more showery on Friday as it kind of works in here. And then basically by into Friday night and Saturday, we're into a deeper amount of humidity. And this is going to produce uh, some... A little bit more robust shower and thunderstorm activity, probably scattered in nature. And you can see that the six hourly QPFs indicating that, okay, it's going to drop a little bit of rainfall. We're also tapping into uh, precipitable water metrics, uh, PWATs at about two to three sigma standard deviation. And so consequently, a little bit more to uh, uh, work with here in terms of moisture. And that's going to allow some uh, probably locally heavy downpours. That typical stuff with thunderstorms. By the time we get into Sunday, it's a little bit less. Things dry out just a tiny bit, but we start looking at some pop-up shower and thunderstorm activity. This is uh, going into the uh, late part of the day, and then things kind of wind down in the evening. And then as we get into Monday, looking at more shower and thunderstorm activity as the shortwave trough pushes in and probably squeezes out what would be a pretty humid air mass here beyond the outlook period as we go into the early and mid part of next week. And looking at the uh, GFS uh, plumes here, what we can see is uh, just tiny amounts of precipitation. going to ignore it because it's not really going to happen here for basically Tuesday uh, going into Wednesday and Thursday. And eventually we're going to get into a little bit more humidity and that's going to pop some shower and thunderstorm activity. That's the three hourly QPF. The total amount of uh, quantitative precipitation forecast, you can see a little bit of a convection, then a leveling off, a little bit more convection, leveling off so on and so forth incrementally each day but all put together we're looking at as we get into this coming weekend maybe a little bit better than one inch amounts from uh, what will be a couple of days three days of uh, showers and potentially two days of thunderstorms going into sunday now we're starting the period rather cool this is the uh, uh 850 hectopascal temperatures roughly about the top of mount mansfield that slice of the atmosphere so a little bit cool but we warm it up and as we get into the late part of the week and into this weekend, start to see a little bit of a slow uh, cooling on down. Looking at wind, I don't think we have anything to worry about here. It's pretty much under 30 knots. All good there. And, of course, it's going to be all basically precipitation type is rain. Now, looking at total P watts, I was talking about that precipitable water. 
you can see that this metric here increases for this coming weekend and then putting cape over that you can see that our strongest uh, joules 1200 uh, kilograms for energy uh, is basically on uh, on Saturday and then it cuts down just a little bit on Sunday putting shear over that not a lot of shear to work with as it's going to be during this period here we're looking at under 20 knots Weather Prediction Center of NOAA indicates about uh, 1.5 inches uh, with 2 inch amounts in uh, looks like the White Mountains in New Hampshire and you can see a little bit drier to the north and west a little bit wetter uh, the rest of the state. Switching over to temperatures this is the 2 meter temperature anomalies we're running a little bit below normal currently right now it's above normal in central Canada into parts of northeastern Canada colder than normal now on the west coast a little bit warm up along southern Alaska and so on and so forth. What does that mean? Well we're going to see a little bit of a warming trend over the next five days. These are meteorological output statistics of the next five max temperature days. So we're running about uh, weighted only about three degrees above normal. And as we get into three days later, very similar about three degrees above normal and neutral all surrounding us. Pretty early in the year to really worry about something here, but we have a uh, temperature uh, sea surface temperature anomalies are really out of control off Africa this early in the season it is amazing and so we're spawning Cape Verde storms these are the Cape Verde islands and systems coming off of West Africa easterly waves then uh, producing uh, 80 percent chance of another cyclone this would be Cindy and we already have Brett as a tropical storm where are they headed Brett's indicated that it's going to probably fall apart as it crosses through the uh, the Leeward Islands and into the Caribbean Basin, whereas Cindy may go out to sea before ever getting there. We'll take a look at the uh, uh, European Ensemble 51 member. So these are our two systems. This is the European Ensemble from Weather Nerds, and uh, this is the big Azores High or sometimes the Bermuda High. And consequently, uh, this is how the models take it. This uh, weakens considerably and kind of falls apart. This is Cindy. Cindy makes a right turn. Latest indications are she goes north out the sea, runs into much colder water, but temperatures are pretty much off the charts warm, and that means we're going to probably see active systems coming off West Africa. That's it from here. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights. Thanks for watching.